Uh, my name is Madeline, 28. I'm Korean American adoptee, and I grew up in Maryland. And I'm Crystal. I'm 39, adopted, and from Kansas. How, how does it feel to be dealt, like, not to say shittier cards, but like, you know, like, yeah, you get it's born. not a full house. <laughs> yeah, is exactly. Yeah. Like, how do you reconcile that with 28 years of living? I think my mentality was really just like, fuck it. <laughs> you know, like, this is the hand and I'm, I'll just play. And I think, and just expected to, to lose, mm -hmm. you know, where it's like, I don't know. It's kind of a dead hand. Like that's just the perspective that I had. It was like it's a dead hand, but I'm in the game. If I lose, whatever. If I win, whatever. You know, just kind of like having low expectations and how to have standards for myself and like how to kind of believe in myself in a way that I never cared to, you know, when I was younger. It just felt like very worthless and that nothing really you know mattered and I'm a lot more invested in the in the hand you know mm. yeah that's cool yeah I love that I love that I feel like my response now is kind of like okay I know the game is a sham like it's all a fucking sham and we're just gonna like play with the cards because these are the only cards I have yeah and these cards aren't going anywhere right and yeah because the the alternative is folding yeah like for good yeah and that's i i definitely consider that as a younger person yeah and as an older person yeah yeah when i moved to the res when i was like 30 it was weird because like i wanted to connect with my kickapoo relatives and I knew like a handful of them that's where like my biological mother's from it was strange because like people already knew me and but they didn't know me they knew of me mm -hmm. and terms of like my biological mother Wendy and he's like oh that's Wendy's kid that's Wendy's kid that like grew up in Topeka like in tribal communities it's all about like your lineage and who you are like raised by and who you're brought up by and all of that your grandparents and so so it was like hella weird to be like well all these people already know me they know of me mm -hmm. they think they know me yeah. um but they know of me and i don't really know them yeah. at all because they knew like it's a small tribal community it's like 800 people on the reservation um and it's so small that like people know when like there's a 16 year old girl who like has a baby that she gives up for adoption and then the baby is like raised like an hour away yeah it was it was really weird it was weird <laughs> um and now like for example like I was in this conversation with a coworker like early on and she is, um, she's probably like 10 years younger than me. So she's probably about your age. And she's Lakota, like on both of her parents' side. She comes from a prominent family. I think probably because of like my bios and stuff that were available to her. Cause like I list like my tribal affiliations. I list like my Latinx identity. Um, because on my bi biological father's side, like they're, they're from Mexico. Like I grew up with a prey band Potawatomi dad and then like a Cherokee mom and I identify as both. I'm also Kickapoo. And so this woman, we're like just chilling online for like a one-on-one, -on -one, just getting to know you. And she like goes hard into her like Lakota, like she's a Lakota nationalist and made it really clear that like pan Indian identity doesn't have a place in her analysis. 
and I was like, okay, oh. that's interesting that she was putting her like lens on blast, but it was also kind of like in a slightly inhospitable way. Cause I'm like, I'm, I don't identify as pan Indian either. I come from a very inner tribal family. Right. Like we have three different tribes that we're all enrolled in. So in that way, like outside of like my, like Kansas native context, mm -hmm. like people notice and they're like, oh, and, but I put it in my bio. I'm like mm. my, you know, I put like, I list Kickapoo tribe in Kansas first, cause that's a nation that I'm like enrolled in as a citizen. But then like, I also was exposed and like came up with some Potawatomi ways, Cherokee ways. And like, I have roots in all of these communities right. and not just one. Right. And so, so I think it does. I think to some people, it like really raises like an eyebrow, like, okay, what are you about? And like, are you like, what kind of native are you? Yeah. Right. And I'm like, that's cool. Like I've gotten that since I started like immersing myself in like all native contexts. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. like I very easily could have just like been like the native who just like is straight up in the cities and like don't seek out like opportunities to like connect with my tribes' cultural ways. Um, and a lot of people do that. Mm -hmm. And it just wasn't a pathway that I was interested in. Yeah. And so, um, but yeah, so like because of that decision, like I, I th I'm very familiar with that tension and that dynamic and yeah. the kind of like the raised eyebrow. Yeah. There are areas of my identity, um, like cultural identity that like, I think, I think with all natives have areas of their identity that they that there's like some, there's hurt there. There's some kind of pain and like that stems from colonial trauma. How does being an adoptee like come up in ways that like are different now for you like as an adult who mm -hmm. is like fully leaning into your like exploration? Oh, uh, it's like been a 180, but then it's like super weird when, you know, I'm in elementary school and people are making fun of my eyes and like calling me a chink and I'm just kind of like, oh, well, yeah, I am, I am Asian. But I don't, you know, I think a lot of Korean adoptees experience that where we experience racism and then it's like, we don't have anyone to talk to about it. You mm. know, we don't have that support system to say like, oh, you know, fuck them or forget it or they don't know what they're talking, you know, that, that support, you know, and that community to sort of come back those feelings or explain like what that is you just kind of get called this name and you don't even really know what it is and you're just kind of like it just hurts now as an adult and I think this is also like a shared experience like once you sort of get out of that veil of whiteness and that protection sort of or that bubble I think that my parents were had created for me you know, you get out into the real world and you are like, oh, no, I'm the way that I experience the world is actually very different from like my mom and my dad and like my cousins and my white friends. And I feel like once since I've been able to talk about adoption and like I don't know, identify as a Korean American, I'm yeah, just I think super conscious about it and and just so aware of how how I'm treated, you know, by by all people. We as adoptees get the opportunity to like transform the experiences that we had when we were kids, process them, turn them into something that actually is meaningful and isn't just mm. a source of pain. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of power in that.